In this video, we're going to write a function that takes a non-negative integer and returns the largest integer whose square is less than or equal to the integer that we're given as input. So to make that a bit more concrete, let's take a look at an example. So let's assume that the input that we're given, the integer is 300, and the function that we write should return the number 17. And the reason for that is if we square 17, we get a value which is equal to 289, and that's strictly less than 300, the input here. But if we go up to the next integer, 18, and we square that, it's going to give us 324. So that's too high, that's strictly greater than 300. So 17 is the integer such that if we square it, it's either less than or equal to the value that we're given as input. So in this case, it's less than or equal to the value of 300. 18 is too much, so 17 is the number that we return. So that's the general gist of what we wanna solve in this video, and in order for us to kind of let's say conceptualize this problem a little bit more and really understand it, let's take a smaller example and step through that and see if we can derive any insights based on that. So let's take a look for, let's say k is equal to 12, where k is the number that we're given as input. So for k is equal to 12, what we wanna do is we wanna find some number such that if we square it, it's less than or equal to 12, and we wanna find the closest such, such number. So one thing that we could do is we could just start all the way from, let's say one, and then we can square that number and then check the result of that. So one squared is equal to one. And then we could just keep going in this fashion from one all the way up to the number k. And basically along the way, what we'll do is we'll check, hey, is this value greater than the value k? If it is, then we should go back to the previous number because that number was the closest one without actually going over. So let's continue in this way. So one squared is equal to one. So that's less than the number that we're given as input. So we should go to the next integer up, that's two. We'll square that, this is equal to four. We check four is still less than k, so we check the next number up. So three squared is equal to nine. So nine is less than k, so we keep going to the next integer up, which is four. We square that, we get 16. We check that value, and we see that 16 is strictly greater than 12. So we know that we went too far. So what we're gonna do is we say, okay, go back one to three, and that is the number that we uh, are after. So we, our function would return three as the uh, expected return for this case. So this kind of gives a bit of an algorithm as to how you would generally solve this problem. This, this approach will indeed work for any such k. You can just loop from 1 to k, and you could square the number, and you can check, hey, is this number equal to the value, or is it greater than the value? And then based on that, you can either move forward or return the number that you're on. So if we were to follow this particular approach, this algorithm would give time complexity O of k, where k is the, uh, the size k is with respect to the integer that we're given as input, and this is okay, this will work, but in the case where you have something like a 32-bit integer, this is going to be quite, um, quite burdensome to actually do. So we want to see if we can try to improve this algorithm anymore by using some other technique or some other approach. And as you probably guessed, we're going to be making use of binary search to help us to do this. So the way that we can invoke binary search is more or less by making two key but very simple observations about what we already have in front of us. So let's go through those observations and see if we can see how we can actually suss out how binary search can be applied in this case. So one thing that we can note is let's just take a look at this example here. 3 squared is equal to 9. Well, we know that if we increase the integer, namely if we go, or, or sorry, if we decrease the integer, if we take 3 and go below, like 2 squared or 1 squared, we know that we're not going to get any closer to k. Well, in the sense, we're not going to get a number that's larger than the number that we're already on. So 3 squared is 9, but if we decrease the integer that we're squaring, namely 2 squared or 1 squared, we're not going to get any numbers that are larger than the number that we're currently on. That is, all of the numbers with integers less than, in this case, 3, are less than, they will square to, less than the value that we have currently in front of us. Likewise, if we look at this integer here, 4 squared, we know that in this case, we checked, we said, oh, 16 is bigger than k. So it turns out that, of course, if we square, let's say, 5 or 6 or 7 or 8 or any number beyond 4, those numbers are also going to be larger, and those numbers aren't going to um, get us any closer to k. We need to essentially go in the opposite direction because we keep, if we keep increasing the integer that we're squaring, we're not going to 
essentially solve our problem of getting to the number that squares to k because we're getting uh, essentially numbers that square to too large an output. So if we if we say 5 squared, this is equal to 25. 6 squared is equal to 36. So if we keep going in this fashion, we're just we're just going to keep getting numbers that are larger. So in some sense, those two observations are going to help us with respect to disregarding a whole set of the space of numbers so that way we can just kind of hone in on the numbers that are potential candidates for returning in this case. So for instance, if we stumble on this four and we say four squared is equal to 16, if we have a, a big list of numbers from zero to K, then what we can do is we can say, oh, okay, you know what? If we go from four, five, six, anything all the way up to K, so like that's seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, what we can do is we can say, don't even look at any of these other numbers because if we square them, we're just going to increase the value. So you know what? Just eliminate all of those numbers and just focus on the numbers below. And in this much the same fashion, if we were to check this out, square three and we get nine, we know that, okay, we're not quite at K yet, but hey, if you want, you'll probably realize that if we square any of the numbers before three, you're going to get numbers that are lesser than three. So it doesn't make sense to go through that way either because all of the numbers are just going to be lesser than the one that we're currently on. So that's going to allow us to kind of make these generalizations where we can just eliminate whole elements of the search space in much the same way that binary search does. So I hope that kind of example was somewhat clear. And if it wasn't clear in that description, as we go through it, hopefully this idea will um, sort of solidify. So let me just kind of get rid of these things here. So in the way that binary search works, let's actually step through how we would tweak this type of approach to formulate itself into a binary search like idea. So if we were to, let's say, write the numbers one all the way up to, let's say, k, where in this case, k is equal to 12, what we would do in binary search is, again, we have kind of a low point, a high point, and a midpoint, where the low point is the start of the array, the high point is the element at the end of it, and then the midpoint is just the kind of this, the, the average of the low and the high. So in this case, low is starting from the very first element, the number one, and then the high point is all the way up into the number k. So in this case, k is equal to 12, we'll assume. We'll just say k is equal to 12. So in this case, that's our list. And then the midpoint would be somewhere around here. So it would be the number 6. Since 6 is in between, uh, that would be the midpoint in this particular case. So then what we would do is we would say, OK, take the midpoint, as you do in binary search. And in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to square that number. So we're going to say, check out what 6 squared is. That's equal to 36. And then based on those two observations that we mentioned earlier, we can say, oh, OK, this number 36 is actually greater than k. So we know that all the numbers above 6 that we square are only going to increase this value. So it's not going to put us any closer in the direction that we want to go. So what we can do is we can eliminate all of the other numbers up to k, that is 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We can eliminate all of those numbers from 6 to 12, and we can just focus on the numbers 1 through 5. So that's kind of the same thing as what we did in binary search, where we just said, hey, disregard the upper portion, and then redefine that high point equal to a new high point. So what we would end up doing is we would go here, and our high point would now be the number 5. It would be the number 5, and that would be our new high point because we disregarded all of the elements above 5. So then what we do is we calculate the midpoint here. We've got our low point still at 1 and our high point at 5. We calculate the midpoint, which let's say is 2. And then what we do is we say, OK, here's our midpoint. Let's go ahead and square that midpoint. So we square it, we get 4, and then we have the opposite problem or the opposite instance, where now the element that we've squared is less than the value k. So now what we can do is we can say, OK, all of the elements from 2 below all of those can be eliminated because none of those are going to get us to a higher value, which is what we want to get because we, we essentially checked four, it's less than 12. We want to get to a higher value. So what we're going to do is we're just going to eliminate all of the elements of the search space and we're going to redefine our low point now to be equal to three. And we're just going to keep doing this in very much the same fashion as you should be familiar with in binary search. So I'd encourage you to check out the other binary search videos in this playlist if you're a little rusty with it or if you want to kind of see that as a refresher. So now that we have kind of the general idea, let's go ahead and just start to code that up. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off by just defining our, our bounds. So low will be equal to zero. That's the first, uh, in this case, the first element in our list from zero to k. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say high is equal to k. So k, again, is 
in the case that we just went over, k is equal to 12. That's the number that we're given as input into this function here. So now we're just going to loop as we usually do while low is less than or equal to high. And then we're going to calculate our midpoint in much the same way as we've done in the past. We'll say mid is equal to low plus high divided by 2. So that's going to give us, in the case initially for 12 anyway, it's going to give us a midpoint of 6. And then just like we did up here, we're going to square that midpoint and then do essentially a check. Hey, is this number greater than k or is it less than k? So let's go ahead and do that. We'll call this variable mid squared and we'll set this equal to mid times mid. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do our two checks. So if, if mid squared is less than or equal to k, then what we're going to do is we're going to reset our low point. So low is going to be equal to mid plus 1. And then in the other case, so otherwise where it's, it's greater than k, what we're going to do is we're going to say high is equal to mid minus 1. So we're redefining our high point in that case. So that was this was the high point. So in this case, we've redefined our high point because it was initially 12. We've bumped that down to uh, five because we already kind of eliminated everything from six and beyond and in this case was the else condition where the Element that we got from squaring the midpoint was too low and then we bumped up the low point So that's kind of the two cases that we just covered here and then just like we did when we kind of um, did this backtracking when We were going through we checked. Oh, is this the right number? Is this the right number? Is this the right number? Is this it? No, we went too far go back one. We're gonna return We're gonna return left minus one and that's going to give us the answer that we're after. So let's just go ahead and make sure that this is actually going to perform the integer square root as we expect. Let's just go down here and call the function. So we'll say print integer square root and we'll feed it in the value of k that we defined up above. So I'll write this, I'll clear the terminal and actually I meant to call this not left but uh, low. And I'll give another space here. Let me try that again. So we'll say Python integer square root, which is the name of this file, run it, and we get the number 17, which is exactly what we expected from this example up here. Let's go ahead and try this for k is equal to 12. So we should get three if this actually works. So let's write it, and then we'll give it a run. And we indeed, we get three for the answer there. So that pretty much does it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section below. Of course, the code, as always, will be hosted on my GitHub, and you can just download that and play with it if you wish. Uh, thanks again for watching, and have a great day. Bye.